There you have it. There you have it, YouTube family. Okay, I didn't bring the GoPro today. Just got the run done, got it done, no stopping and filming. So, uh, no, no footage from today's run, but it was 16 miles. Uh, so what is that, uh, 25 kilometers? And so seven minutes per mile or four minutes and 20 seconds per kilometer. And uh, keep in mind, I did 23 miles total yesterday. And uh, gosh, wow, I don't know, like I feel pretty good considering I did 23 miles yesterday. The leg, I, I would say on this run for the 16 miles, my legs started to feel tired around mile 12 to 13. So anyway, I would say overall, very, very encouraging. And if you've been watching uh, the channel for a while now, you're probably figuring out, like I like to go easy for a couple days and then I like to go hard for two or three days. And, uh, but the only way that I can go kinda hard is to begin taking all of my vitamins and minerals and uh, basically just getting this uh, electrolyte, the electrolytes replenished immediately. And if you missed last night's live stream, go check it out, upper right hand corner. We talk about electrolytes and fueling during a marathon race. And also we're gonna talk about racing tactics. So, the further I go into this marathon training, maybe the older I'm getting, it's like that 30 minute window right after a run becomes even more important for recovery. Just get, basically it's like get ready for tomorrow right now. One last thing, the Hoka Carbon Rockets now have 48 miles in them, so we're almost to 50. So I'll get you my full review of the Hoka Carbon Rockets probably in the next three or four days. Got a lot of thoughts on these uh, after 50 miles. Woo! And before we dive into today's topic, I am curious to see what is in these packages. I don't remember ordering anything. Let's see here. Whoop. Socks. Apex home socks. I get it now. Okay, remember, I was a little confused. Like, socks are awesome, but it's because we talked about socks like 10 days ago. That's awesome. Thank you, Jack. Jack said, hi, Seth. Thanks for creating such a positive community. It's gotten me excited to run again, and I can't thank you enough. Jack, that is what it is all about, and that actually connects to today's topic about coaching. So, um, let's see, Jack, you're the best. Thank you for sending the socks. I'll give them a shot, maybe even tomorrow, up in the mountains. We shall see. Okay, moving on to coaching. Uh, let me just say at the beginning, I am not looking to uh, become a coach right now, maybe down the road. Basically, there's only 24 hours in a day. I would love to coach. I'd love to coach a high school cross country team. I'd love to coach people individually, one on one. Um, I think there's definitely a, a need out there to provide guidance for people and basic understanding of how aerobic development works in the running world, but I just don't have enough time. Basically because this YouTube channel, like I would have to cut back, and nobody wants that, I would have to cut back pretty tremendously, I think, in the quality and quantity of these daily vlogs, and I don't want to do that. I think I can be a, a sounding board and a, a voice for all of you out there that are just trying to get off the couch like Jack said, he's inspired again to run. So anyway, as we dive into this topic, I just want to mention that, um, and also, I am running out of time to answer your email. So if you have emailed me in the last 10 days, thank you for your patience. I don't know what to do. I, there's just not enough time to, because some of the emails coming in are actually coaching related, asking about training ideas, and I would have to really spend like 10, 15 minutes to type out a well thought out answer. And I just, I don't have 10 or 15 minutes right now. So I'm, I'm trying to strategize a better way to help all of you that are emailing me about coaching questions. Okay, here we go. Of course, keyword is coaches. You better believe it. Keyword, hit it up down below is coaches. And I have had five coaches in my life. My middle school coach was, was, uh, was cross country and track. I had two cross country coaches in high school and one track coach. And then Mark Wetmore at CU was my cross country and track coach for four or five years at CU. So I've had five coaches in my life and all of them brought different qualities to the table, uh, different experience level, different um, abilities to 
push my buttons in a good way. Like knowing when to hold me back and knowing when to push me forward. So here are five points that I would look at or five qualities, characteristics that I would look at if I was seeking out a running coach. Here's number one, uh, the ability to read people. All right, and let me explain. Not physiologically, although that might play in, a, play in later down the line, but rather mentally. Can the coach pick up on my personality and my mentality when it comes to getting in shape, comes to doing a, a hard track workout, comes to getting up at 6 a.m. In a, in a blizzard to get out the door for a 15 mile middle distance run, whatever the case may be, can the coach read me? Because I think that's really important for a coach to get to know his or her athletes and understand what makes them tick, what makes them push themselves hard enough but not too hard, all right? So that's number one, uh, the ability to read people. Cause it's a, it's a, it's a, I would say it's a, it's a, uh, it's a strength. It can also be, I, I would say it could be a weakness if you don't have that ability. Um, I could really see this playing out at the collegiate level when you are recruiting athletes. Uh, you might have a particular uh, dynamic or culture within your cross country and track program at the collegiate level. And if you can't formulate uh, a good solid culture that you that you love as a coach then and 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 the the components meaning the athletes that are coming into that culture if one or two components throws the culture off you're in trouble and point number two positivity helps all right when you're when I'm working with a coach I like to work with positive people it, it gives me en energy for a workout for a long run to wake up when you don't want to wake up to go to the gym when you're just sore and you just want to lay on the couch but I like that positivity to really be rooted in realism Me meaning uh, the coach gives positive feedback but also is not afraid to keep you grounded in reality with respect to your volume of training, with respect to how many races you can do in a training block. Like if a coach is sending you out every weekend or twice a week for a race or whatever, I don't know, or like over racing you, that can be not, that's not a good, like that's not, that's not rooted in a realistic uh, racing schedule. So anyway, that's what I would look for, positivity, but rooted in realism. Does that make sense? And point number three for looking for a coach, what quality I'm looking for, the coach should have a basic understanding of the science behind long distance running, whether it's cardiac efficiency or uh, developing uh, like aerobic versus anaerobic or whatever that, I mean, we could go on and on. Um, so if you don't have that basic scientific understanding, that's a, that's a big red flag, uh, but, but I will say point number four kind of, in my opinion, trumps point number three. So point number four, uh, does the coach have the experience backed up with success? I mean, again, it kind of goes without saying, but if, if a coach has been coaching for 20 years, but his or her athletes have never really met their full potential or are struggling to hit their PRs in the prime years of their racing or uh, maybe has a history, ooh, this is a good one, maybe has a history of sending their athletes into injuries, all right? That would be a red flag. Um, so this is something you might wanna consider when if you're interviewing a coach or looking at a coaching website. Like for me, I, ha I coached at the collegiate level for I think three years, I'm not doing it now, but um, I, I would say that's pro that's not enough experience. Like I would like to see at least, oh, I'm gonna say at least a decade. I know that's crazy, but a decade of experience really, really would give me a lot more confidence in a coach and especially if it's backed up with results. And last but not least, this is kind of a, oh man, this is crazy. This, this, is, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, the coach should challenge you. And the coach, it for me, at least, all right, talking for me, is not my best friend, okay? I, I have best friends that I can go get drinks with at, you know, at the bar and watch a football game. The coach is there to guide you toward your goals, guide you towards your PRs. The coach shouldn't be there to be your best friend. And for example, I think the coach should be able to say, I'm going to make you hurt. But the reason I'm going to make you hurt is 
you hired me, you joined this running program because you wanted to achieve a goal. And in order to achieve that goal, rooted in realism, I know what it's gonna take to get you to that point, which means you're gonna have to go through suffering to get there. And one last point to drive this home as far as can a coach challenge me is I was not pushed hard enough in high school. Specifically, like later on in high school, basically I think I was some untapped talent and that's why I was able to train myself uh, for a year as a freshman in college and eventually I walked on to the CU cross country team. Like I knew I had more in me and so I trained alone for a year and boom. So. Um, again, it's it's you got to walk the line, but I would say I would lean in the direction of taking little uh, calculated risks in training in order to reach a goal. And I did not quite have that in high school. So, um, oh, man, what a topic. So coaches, that is the key word. And the question of the day, what would be your top one or two qualities that you would look for in a coach? Or in other words, if you were striving for a PR, how would you want to be pushed? Like what would be uh, a couple factors that you feel like, okay, I know these one or two things are really gonna help me achieve a PR. All right, does that sound good? What a topic. And by the way, this topic was emailed into me or maybe it was sent to me on Facebook and I loved it. I, I was This was emailed to me like last week. So if you have ideas for future vlogs, certainly send them to me. I'll add them to the list. And if one really jumps out at me like this one did, I will, uh, I'll put it in the, put it in the rotation and we will make it happen. So thank you so much to whomever, I don't remember your name, but whoever sent me this idea for a vlog topic. Oh man. Ah, oh, it gets me fired up. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. I'm not quite going to sign off. Gonna go. We're getting ready for the live stream. Oh yeah, ran in these today. Getting ready for the live stream where we talked about electrolytes and fueling during a marathon. And then also we're gonna talk about racing tactics. So, oh man, whoo, what a day. And good night. Seek beauty, work hard, love each other.